Hello, I'm the Commander Xander. I remember it so that a Sandra critic doesn't have to. And neither should you! Well, it's Valentine's Day, the lovey-dovey holiday. And this year happens to land in a weekend. Double lucky for the romantic ones. And I bet you're probably wanting me to review something that's on the romantic side of things. Well, I've thought long and hard about this, and, well, I pretty much gave it away in my Super Bowl commercial review that I will be. But I had to think of a good one. Something that would really stand out there as a romantic... I did Sex in the City, the movie. So for those of you who are familiar with the TV show, they had their own movie that came out in 2008. And basically, it sums up Sex in the City in a nutshell. I mean, it's okay, I guess, but is it really worth the hype for all you Sex in the City fans? Well, you're about to find out. This is Sex in the City, the movie. Roll the clip. Credit for the movie does go to New Line Cinema, and no, this is not for monetary purposes. This is strictly for review. Hey, they ain't a busy year, because didn't they have a Harold and Kumar sequel that year, too? Oh, and HBO too, because you know they're the thing. So we start with the theme song, which takes on a whole new twist in New York City! Fabulous! A film by Michael Patrick King. This is Carrie Bradshaw, Bradshaw, not to be confused with Terry Bradshaw, and no, they're not related, because one's a fictional character and the other one's a four-time Super Bowl champion. Played by the ultra-talented Sarah Jessica Parker. That's Carrie Bradshaw. Whoa! Right off the bat, hello, with the fluorescent design on the dress. Fabulous! She, of course, has three friends, and there's the title of the movie for a reminder of what movie we're dealing with. Okay, clearly this is not intended for children, because right off the bat we get this scene. Oh my. Like, walk, 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 don't, don't run into the trouble, don't run. Look at all the design she has. This is uh, Kristen Davis, played by Charlotte York Goldenblatt. And that is Miranda Hobbs, played by the ultra-lovely Cynthia Nixon. And finally, Samantha Jones, played by the... Rated Kim Cattrall. These four friends are the four best friends that anyone can find. Hey, nothing wrong with that, kitties. Good for that happy couple. She comes up with a book. Two books, three books galore. All right, we know what this is all about. They're recapping what's going on for those who have not watched Sex in the City. So, little spoiler alert. If you don't want to see what has happened and you want to watch Sex in the City, the show, to get up to the movie and get your coin up, then go ahead and leave this review and go watch Sex in the City. For the rest of you, let's move on. Carrie has a big time crush in a relationship with John James, Mr. Big Preston, played by Chris Knott. And for you Wisconsinites, he is a local. And just like that, I was. Three books. Manhattan. Three years later. I love it. We still feel like those four single girls. And even though time had moved us on, I managed to stay exactly where I was. Exactly. Whoop! Traffic. Lucky man. All right, let's move on. They're trying to find an apartment. Oh my, that's not promising. That looks like my old fucking apartment. No, literally. 
If you've seen my freaking reviews, have you noticed a difference in the background? No orange walls in the last year plus? A lot more real estate! Hell, I'm sitting in a couch! It's super comfy. Obviously, they're moving on. I see someone's ready for St. Patrick's Day, which is a month away. They decide to move to this apartment. It's like they're speaking my language. They go from that crap to an upgrade, just like me! Look at this place. I mean, it's fabulous. Or paradise. Hello. I'm Miss Jane. Hello. 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 So eventually, yes, I want you to be envious of my life because I am the queen of New York. Oh, and there's Samantha. Oh my God, man, do they all look fabulous? So they go to the jewelry store. It's a full rest of time. Oh Jesus Christ! What does this scene remind you of? My God, you're trying to get a fluorescent diamond rose earring necklace, whatever that thing is. I mean, come on, you gotta be kidding me. Something that might be out of your price range, way out of your price range. He does this every Friday. Stop torturing yourself, man. You'll never afford it. Live in the now. Yes, Samantha. Live in the fucking now! Or are you just waiting for someone else to buy it for you for a romantic gift for Valentine's Day? <gasps> oh, you should totally do that! Let's move on. Okay, moving on. So we go to the auction. Wait a minute, they're auctioning for that thing? How could you fuckers afford all this crap? Ooh! Using a little expedive! Alright, I think we all know who's winning this bidding war. When you say fucking in between the dollar amount, the number and the dollar, the word dollar, you are totally winning this bid. Up! Wait a minute, so then why would you frantically go on? What a gutsy move. It's like throwing away your poker move and you lost. You fucking flushed. You lost. No kidding, because it's competitive. And if you don't win the damn thing, it's a lose-lose situation. Because either you don't win the thing, or if you do win the thing, you're paying the price to get that thing. You can't win either way. Really huh? Alright, instead of talking about how sad bidding is, let's move on. Ooh, lovely necklace there by Miss Carrie Bradshaw. Yes, because I want to feel like I bought some of this and not all you, so that way I feel like I'm riding off of your success. 
Even though I have success on my own. Okay, we move on to a nice... Oh, so they did tie the knot. Wait, what the hell? We're 12 minutes into the movie and already we got the big wedding scene? This only makes me wonder what the hell's going on the rest of the movie. Oh, I see what this is all about. They're going to rush this. Then they're going to feel pressure about rushing it. So they're going to go their separate ways. And they're going to live through that life of depression and moving on and all that wonderful stuff. And then they're going to get back together and live happily ever after. It's one of those movies, isn't it? Well, I signed up for it. What? Oh my fucking god. That's what you think of? She comes up with the word that says, Oh, I got a big announcement to make. And she thinks she got a Botox? What kind of a friend are you? No, she did not get a Botox. Otherwise, she'd look like this. Kill Tim Allen. I got a Botox injection. <laughs> I can't even think of that. Oh, much less look at it. Really? Botox? Botox! Sick! Sick friend! Oh, and that's not the only thing that's sick about her in this movie. You'll just have to wait to find out. No, not the not the cute lovey dovey she's with. Dress. She doesn't sound too happy. So she was excited that she was going to get a Botox. She's not happy that they tied the knot. You know, if I were Carrie Bradshaw, I would dump her in a heartbeat. What a great supporter she is. Come on, show some respect. You sounded more excited about the Botox. Yeah, what the fucking hell? How could you be more excited about a Botox than tying the fucking knot? All right, so the two are doing some planning along with him for the wedding. Oh, that's a nice looking dress. Very businesslike. I like it. What do they think? And there's nothing wrong with that, girlfriend. I absolutely love you for that. When I saw it, I thought, that is what I should marry the man. Well, who's it by? What's the label? Oh, and I found it at a vintage shop. The bride wore a dress by no one. Come on. Okay, I don't like this dude. Can't you fucking show some support? Again, where's the support for Carrie Pratshaw? Look at the cute little puppies! I swear to God, we're all gonna go deaf if we have to go buy this. So she calls her on the phone while she's eating pizza and having a nice quiet afternoon with her soon-to-be husband. You are so needing a life. Is it just me, or does she sound like Carrie Fisher? I know that's not Carrie Fisher, but doesn't it really sound like Carrie Fisher? Maybe it's a combination of Carrie Fisher and Elisa Girl put together, and this is this lady. All right, moving on. So they get her an actual job. Holy fucking shit! Yeah, I like the other dress better. Simple was wrong. Nothing wrong with Simple. What was wrong with that? But no. She has to listen to everyone else and give their takes on it, and that's this. Holy fucking shit, that is quite a wedding dress. Wow. All right, so. Special delivery! 
There, you need to sign here. Stop staring at the box and sign it so I can go on and move on with my life. Dear Carrie, I saw your photo from the Vogue shoot. This dress belongs to you. Westwood. Westwood? Who's fucking Westwood? Ugh. At any rate. So, in any case, she got a dress, and here comes a nice scene in the bed. Good lord, there's enough for room for one more person. Why do you need a bed that big when it's just the two of you? Oh, I see what this is. You can meet in the middle and then separate at night. Ah, genius! Next! They find their uh, wedding location. At the McGraw Rotunda, because of, look at that up above. Very well done, very classy. Meanwhile, we have this little moment. Anything you want for me? Got milk or espresso or something? Oh, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Meanwhile, we got this lovely scene because it can't be Sex in the City without this. Is there you want for me? Yep. Look away, kitties. Uh, yeah. Wait, wait. Come over. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Look at the little girl! It's a cute little girl and a nice little person and whatnot. Oh boy. Now she's in bed by herself. For God's sakes, don't say that! Why would you bring the kid to this scene? What are you trying to do? Warp or fragile your mind with these fantasy visions and these strange words? Golly! Seriously, you couldn't find a fucking babysitter for this kid? Great parenting! She's three. She doesn't know what it means. I'm 41 and I still don't know what it means. I know. For God's sakes, I don't care if you're 41. The kid is fucking three years old. She doesn't need to hear this crap! She's just trying to make you laugh. So they're talking about her weirdo problem in the bed. Meanwhile... She's looking for her love. There they are. Nice, happy, wonderful, fantastic. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> don't, don't even bother. I take it that looks like a commercial break. I need some fresh air! <laughs>